Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at introduction to bearings. So the first thing is what is this bearings? Well, bearings are just a way of expressing the angle between two objects and there is a specific set of rules that we need to remember about bearings. We always measure bearings from the north line. Bearings are given as a three figure number and we always draw and measure bearing in a clockwise direction. So the three key words I want you to write down are north line, from, and clockwise. North line, from, and clockwise. Now that we have those three key words down, let's look at an example right here. So a ship sails from point A to point B on a bearing of 067 degrees. Draw a diagram to represent this information. So remember the three key words are north line, from, and clockwise. So the first thing we do is we draw our point A and then we put on the first keyword, the north line. So we insert the north line from A. And then now the next is the from. Now the bearing is always going to be from our north line to the next point. So the next point is B. And we know that that angle is going to be 67 degrees. Now notice how we measure the 67 degrees in a clockwise direction. All right. So what if they had asked us this question now? A ship sails from point A to point B on a bearing of 67 degrees. On what bearing would the ship need to sail back to A? Now remember we already had the diagram of going from point A to point B. Now if we need to sail back to A, then we're asked to find the bearing of A from B. So now the new from position is B. So the first thing is you draw your north line at B. All right, and now we need the bearing and the angle is measured from that north line is in a clockwise direction. So that angle right there is what we need to find around B. Now if we were to split it up right here, we know that going to the east would be 90 degrees from B. Going directly below B south would be 180 degrees. And going to the west of B, that would be 270 degrees. So now let's have a look at first with south here. So we know going south below B would be 180 degrees plus that small angle right there. That small angle, let's call it X. Now we know that small angle x would be equal to 67 using the z angles prince using the z angles rule that angle would be 67 Aye. degrees and so the bearing of a from b would be 180 degrees plus that 67 which is 247 degrees nice all right let's have a this question Let's have a look at this question right here. It says, on four separate occasions, a plane leaves Norman Manley Airport, Jamaica, and fly to different places. The bearings from Jamaica Airport to the others are given below. So the destination are Trinidad, Barbados, and Florida, and the bearing from Jamaica to Trinidad is 77 degrees. The bearing to Barbados is 162, and the bearing to Florida is 356 degrees. Draw a diagram representing all the bearings. So, first thing is, let's just call Jamaica J, Trinidad T, Barbados B, and Miami M. Now, if you want the bearing of Trinidad from Jamaica, you start with your point to represent Jamaica. And then we draw the north line going directly above Jamaica. And then we know that the bearing is measured in a clockwise direction from the north line. And so we just need to measure out 77 degrees and that right there would represent the bearing of Trinidad from Jamaica. What about the bearing of Barbados from Jamaica? 162 degrees is going more than east. It's more going into a southeast direction. And so that image right there would represent 162 degrees. Now, if we wanted to go 356 degrees now for the bearing of Miami from Jamaica, then what we need to do is a complete revolution is 360. 
And so 356 would be pretty close to the north line. So somewhere right there would represent the bearing of Miami from Jamaica. Now, if we were to put it all on one single diagram right here, all right, as you can see, we just compact it a little bit. This would be how it looks on one single diagram. Now, you notice that the 162 degrees, which is the bearing of Barbados from Jamaica, you notice that that 162 is separated as 77 degrees and 85 degrees. And the top part is 75 degrees and the bottom part is 85. But when you add them, you get 162. All right. We got the down there to be one. Also, if you know that all of that angle is 162, then we know that the angle pretty much going around from going straight around back to Miami would be 194. All right. Because if you add them back, the 77, the 85, and the 194, you get 356. So some key takeaway that we must know is that when you're measuring bearing from the north line, all right, given your point right here, if you're going directly to the east, that's of a bearing of 90 degrees. If you're going in a south direction, which is 180 degrees, that's, that's how you would put it on the diagram. You're directly below the point where you started. And if you're measuring the bearing from somewhere going in a western direction, then that's 270 degrees. All right, so those are must know bearings that we should always know. Of course, we need to look at a typical exam style question as we're warming up. So look at this question here. It says if A is on a bearing of 300 degrees from O, and O is northeast of B, and the bearing of B from A is 160 degrees. Draw a diagram to represent the information, and then find the bearing of A from B, the bearing of O from C, and then find the bearing of O from B. Now, the first thing we need to start with is we draw our point O, because that's the starting point. It's always the from. And then we draw our north line from O, all right? And then now the bearing of A from O is 300 degrees. 270 is to the west, so we know we're going a little bit above a westerly direction to the point A. So that yellow point there represents A. Now the next thing that was said was that O is northeast of B. We can't do much with that information yet, but we know that the bearing of B from A is 160. So if you're starting at A, we draw our north line at A. I will know that that bearing is going to be 160 degrees to the point B. Cool. And if you look at it, look at where B is. If you're to go in a northeasterly direction from B, that would go to the point O. So you now we can put B right there. Cool. So now the first part said find the bearing of A from B. So if we want to find the, air, the bearing of A from B, we need to first draw our north line at B. All right. And once we draw our north line from B, all of that angle right there is what we need. Now, all of that angle right there plus X would be 360. We just call that small angle on the inside right there X. But we know that 160 degrees plus X would be equal to 180 by co-interior angles. And so 180 minus 160 is 20. And so the bearing of A from B is 360 minus 20 degrees which is 340 degrees. Okay, cool. All right, now the second part, we need to find the bearing of O from A. So we're back to A now, and so we have our north line at A. Now remember, we know that all of that angle right there, the bearing of B from A is 160, so that angle that we put in red with the arrow pointing is 160. Now let's just call that angle right there Y. Okay, let's just call that angle at O, Y degrees. Now we know that 300 degrees plus Y is equal to 360. Because angles at a point sum to 360. But all the angle on the outside was 300. So Y is going to be 360 minus 300, which is 60 degrees. Cool. Now why is that so important? Because if we know that that angle right there is 60 degrees, let's just put in a dotted line. Look where we put that dotted line going directly east across from the point A. Now we know that the angle above would be 90 degrees. And so let's call the next angle right there W. Now what do we know about that angle W? 
that angle W right there, we know that W plus 90 degrees plus 60 would be equal to 180 because angles in a triangle sum to 180. So by transposition, we get that W is equal to 30 degrees. And so the bearing of O from A is going to be 90 plus W and 90 plus W is 90 plus 30, which is 120 degrees. Easy stuff so far. So that angle right there, we put the arrow to spin around would give us the bearing of O from A. Always remember it's the front position, which is 120 degrees. Now let's look at the third part. We need to find the bore. We need to find the bearing of O from B. Now to find the bearing of O from B, all right, we'll start with our front position. So look at the front position right there. The from is B. So we draw our north line at B. And we need that small angle right there that we put in the yellow color. So if we need that small angle right there, the first thing we can do is, well, let's just call the angle right there R. The angle at A, let's call that R. Now we know that 120 degrees plus R would be 160. And so R works out to be 40 degrees. So let's replace that with 40 degrees. So we know that the 160 would be the top part right there, 120, and the angle below it to be 40. What we do know is if we were to just draw another you know, broken line at the point O, right? Then we know going to the west of O would make that angle right there 270. Now, if that angle right there is 270 going directly to the west, and we know that the bearing from O to the point A was 300 degrees, then we know that that small angle in there would be 30 degrees. And if that small angle inside the triangle is 30 degrees, then, and we already know that the angle out there is 60 degrees, then we can also be able to compute the angle inside the triangle and that angle inside the triangle is going to also compute to 30 degrees. While we're able to compute that angle to 30 degrees, we can combine them now to get 30 plus 30 is 60. So guess what now? Now that we get that, that angle in that triangle is 60, we know that the 60 degrees plus the 40 degrees plus the 20 degrees plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So transposing for Z, we get Z equals 60 degrees. And so the bearing of O from B is 60 degrees. Easy stuff, that's the bearing of O from B. Easy. Nice. Now we just want to finish with one last question right here. So it says a helicopter is set out from its base P and it flies on a bearing of 123 degrees to point Q. When it changes course 60 degrees and flies 18 kilometers to point R. When the point helicopter is at point R, it is 22 kilometers from its starting point. Draw the diagram to represent the course and the information. So we start from our point P and we know that we put our north line and from P to Q, it is 123 degrees. So we Put that right there and we put in our point Q, we put our bearing to be 123 degrees. Now the next thing was mentioned is when we get to the point Q, so we draw our from line or north line at Q now, it changed course to an angle of 60 degrees and then goes to the point R. So we can put on our point R and we know that that angle is 60 degrees and they tell us that the length of it is 18 kilometers, that's the length of the journey. Now, when the point is at point R, it is 22 kilometers from the starting point. So that means the starting point at P to the journey R is 22 kilometers. And that picture right here would represent how you would create your, pretty much your triangle to represent this course. Now, all of this that we did right here, we took that from a CSEC question. This is the CSEC question right here. And look at that, we constructed our diagram that simulated this CSEC question. And then you can get a lot of trigonometry questions to answer. So please be sure to now check out our next video to see how you would apply all of this knowledge that we did right here on bearings and going in a clockwise direction to now solving some trigonometric problems. All right, so that's it. That's it on the introduction of bearings. So stay tuned and see you next.